everyone how are you all i hope you all are doing great at your home you all are fit and fine and i also assume that you all have must enjoyed the summer holidays to the fullest so students first of all let me introduce myself to you i am seema sharma and now onwards i am going to teach you english subject students today we are going to discuss chapter number 2 from the book it so happened and the name of the chapter is children at work let me introduce first of all the summary of this chapter this story portrays the pathetic condition of the poor in the city a boy named velu ran away from home and fell into the trap of life of indignity he found the life of the village better as compared to the city survival in the city is a constant struggle for the poor children work for survival instead of school their childhood is crushed under the cruel hands of poverty the protagonist is an 11 year old boy and he ran away from home as you remember because of distrust in his family boy velu he was surprised to see a mass of people he observed that people were in a great rush the frequent announcement attracted his attention and he found the surrounding chaotic Velu was sad and miserable. He had not had anything other than some peanuts and jaggery. He walked down to Kanur for a day. And then took the train to Chennai. He slept on the floor even near the door of the train. His meditation was broken when a girl called him up on Chennai railway station. She was behind his bench and she wore banyan and had untidy hair and she holding a huge sack on her shoulder. she picked up garbage from the platform and put that in her sack she asked him if he had run away from his house he was lost in his own thoughts that his father spent the money he and his sister earned on his rings he was a drunkard velu's father he was a drunkard she told him that so many children of his age come to the city to become rich she asked him if he was hungry and assured him to find something for him velu was in dilemma about whether to trust and follow the girl or not the girl went ahead and was not much interested in seeing him following however he followed her to the door he was scared to see so many vehicles on the road and even he could not cross the road because it was first time for the velu the girl came to his rescue when he was stuck in the road and helped him to cross the road she warned him not to freeze in between the road and he was amazed to see huge sign boards with the varied pictures then he was amazed to see huge sign boards with the varied pictures he could not understand the words written on them as they were in english language the girl walked up to the bridge from where velu peeped through the railing she advised him not to get caught as they were passing beside the central jail she moved ahead then with a the sack on her shoulder and velu was inquisitive to know what was she carrying in that bag 
and yet could not dare to ask. Then Belu realized that walking barefoot was intolerable on the road, whereas he could easily roam around in the village because you know the streets of the village are muddy. He tried to walk in shape and altogether kept pace with the girl. It took almost an hour to reach a building where the marriage ceremony was going on. She led him behind to a garbage bin which was stinky. Uh, she threw a vada towards him from that garbage bin. And when she was observed that he was hesitant to eat that vada, she told him that she did not have any money to buy food. Velu surrendered before the high intensity of hunger because he was damnly hungry. He was starving at that moment. So she asked if he was coming along or, or wanting to wait. He was aware of the fact that he could not manage alone in this big city. So he ran after. He asked for her name. That what is your name? And then they both moved further towards her home. He observed that the hutments were made of metal sheets, tires, bricks, wood, plastic and what not. He told her that houses in his village were built with the mud and palm leaves. So she put her full sack and picked up another sack. She gave him shoes to wear. Guys, till here our chapter was finished. And now we are going to start the third part of this story. First of all, let's read out the text of the story and then we will move ahead. So let's start reading. There is a row of huts near some dirty puddles. Outside one of the huts, Jaya dumps her sack. Grateful to his friend, Belu thinks of the days ahead. Jaya and Belu walked along the road for half an hour until they came to a bridge across a dirty trickle of water. Dirty trickle of water but it is dirty puddle of a small swimming pool made of mud and dirty water. We are in Tripoli King. Now see that's the kingdom canal said Jaya. To Velu. Velu stared. This was canal? Are you sure? Near some puddles of water was a row of the strangest huts he had ever seen. They were built out of all sorts of things. Metal sheets, tires, bricks, wood and plastic. They stood crudely and looked as if they would fall any moment. Is this where you live? These houses are strange, said Belu. In our village, the houses are made of mud and palm leaves. Jaya went around to one of the huts and dumped her sack outside. Then she picked up an empty one. Let's go. She turned to Veli and gave him a show. Show gave him a push. At least help me now. Here, wear these and come on, come with me. She threw him a pair of old shoes without laces and pushed a sack and a stick into his hands. Velu was confused. What work did she want him to do with these things? The only work he had ever done was on the land owner's farm, weeding and taking cows out to graze. Are there any farms in the city? He asked Jaya. She laughed and thumped her stick on the ground. Farms? Are you serious? There are no farms here. We are rag pickers. 
Rag pickers? See my sack. Full of things I collected. Collected? From where exactly? Asked Velu. From rubbish bins. Where else? From rubbish bins? You collect rubbish? Velu had never heard of such a thing. A. Blockhead. It's not any rubbish. Only paper, plastics, glass, such things. We sell it to Jam Bajar Jaggu. Velu was puzzled. He had heard of people throwing away rubbish. But why would anyone want to buy rubbish? Now who's Jam Bajar Jaggu? And why is he buying all these, all these things? You think he buys it for show? No, he sells it to a factory. Come on, I don't have time to waste, like you. Velu did not move. He had not run away and come to this new place to dig through garbage bins. Oh my God. Jaya poked at him with her stick. Come on. Look here, she shouted. If someone gets there before us, we don't get anything. And don't just stand there, posing big hero. Like, I am trying to help you. Who filled your stomach today, remember? Velu scratched his head because he was surprised. He was confused. He was in dilemma. And he sighed. He took a long, deep breath. Oh, I'll do it for now. He thought. Until I find a better job. So see, here our chapter is finished. Now let's go back to the text. And we will start reading again. So students, Jaya and Velu, they both walked along a road. And the journey, the walk, the pathway was so long. Finally, they came to a bridge and it there was a dirty trickle of water, a small pool of water it was. Then Jaya told him to Velu that, you know, we are in Tripliken. Tripliken is a small place in Chennai. And she also showed to Velu that, look, this is Buckingham Canal. And when Velu looked at the canal, he was surprised. Is this a canal? Seriously? It's just seeming like a dirty pool, a dirty puddle of water. Nobody can say in our, nobody would say in our village that this is a canal. So at that moment, he was so surprised when he looked at the canal. He just stared. Then there were built out or there were so many huts were there and the huts they were built out of so many things like metal sheets, tires, bricks, woods, plastic and what not. They made their huts whatever the things were available there at free of cost. And you know they stood crookly and looked as if they would fall any minute because somehow they just managed that hut. And it was seeming like that the hut would collapse any time. Then Velu asked to Jaya, this, exactly is this where you live? Is this your house? It's really strange. How are you living here? In our village, our houses are always made of mud and palm leaves. We have beautiful huts there. Then Jaya went around to one of the huts. She did not give Velu's questions answer. She just dumped her sack. She just threw her sack outside of that hut. And then she picked up another empty one sack. Because she was busy. She was not having any time to waste. Then hurriedly in that same manner, in that same mood, 
she talked to velu come on let's go n even she gave one more sack to velu also and even she pushed him at least help me now come on you are just standing here literally posing like a hero don't do this come on help me i help you now it's your turn to help me come on come with me then she threw him a pair of old shoes because she noticed this thing that velu was bare feet and there in the hut she already had one pair of old shoes so she gave those old shoes to velu and velu was confused he was surprised that what work did she want him to do with these things what am i going to do with these things the only work velu had ever done it was the weeding and taking cows out to graze in the land owner's farm then he asked to jaya are there any farms in the city so jaya laughed at velu and she said that farms in the city there are no farms here and we don't have farms or farmers here and you know we are rag pickers you are going to help me now you are a rag picker i am a rag picker at that moment velu was surprised he said shockingly rag pickers i am a rag pickers or exactly you are also then jaya told him that look see my sack it's full of these things but ever i have got whatever the things i am collecting so see my collection then velu asked to jaya that exactly from where are you collecting all these things then jaya explained everything to velu that i have collected these things from rubbish bins this is what exactly i am doing this is my work then he said you collect rubbish you collect garbage that waste then velu had never heard of such thing then he said oh my god you are collecting garbage rubbish that just a waste thing then jaya said a hey, blockhead it's not any rubbish it's exactly my stuff it's exactly the thing that i am selling where i used to sell in jam bazar jaggu jam bazar jaggu is a place in chennai so she described that these paper plastic glass i am always collecting from the rubbish bins and sometimes these things i always get on the road and i am keeping and collecting things in my sack and afterward after collection after from the days collection i am just selling these thing to jam bazaar so velu was puzzled he had heard of people throwing away rubbish always and now jaya was telling him jaya was forcing him to collect these rubbish so he was not able to think clearly then he asked who's jam bazaar jaggu and why is he buying all this this is just a waste then she said you think he buys it for show not exactly he uh, always sells these things that i am selling to him he sells further these things in a factory come on i don't have time to waste maybe you have come on come and help me velu did not move he had not run away to the big city just to collect garbage so he was at that moment in a big dilemma that i ran away from my house just because my father was a drunkard and he used to beat me and he always taking up money from my sister and me and now where am i when i ran away from the house i had a lot of dreams and see where am i stuck here i am going to collect garbage exactly was it my dream or it is sin jaya poked at him with her six with her stick she said hey look here if someone gets there before us 
we don't get anything we have to go to jam bazaar jaggu and we have to sell all these things to him come on quick we don't have time don't just stand here you can think afterward don't stand here like a big hero and please come and help me i need your help i help you and i find food for you now it's your turn velu scratched his head and he sighed i'll do it for now he thought until i find a better job so velu did not have any option at that moment he thought for a moment and then he he just talked to himself and he said come on velu you have to do this now and later on you can find any other better job so here our chapter is finished students so guys here is the ending of our chapter and exactly what is the message of the story the message that we have here that child labor that is really really a growing problem of india and as well as of so many country it's already banned from the government side but still a number of people are still working on so many shops on so many dhabas you might have seen you might have noticed that number of uh, childs number of small children are nowadays working and this child labor we all have to stop this because government from government side it's already banned now it's further our duty to stop this child labor so students and this story also represents the harsh reality of so many poor people how velu run away runs away from the house and how he reached chennai station and then he met jaya and here also we come to know the harsh reality that how jaya used to survive herself in that big metro city chennai so students this story is really really a very sensible meaning for all of us that we all must take pledge to save all these children and if you would see uh, if you would noticed any student any child nearby you that child is really small and that child is really working on any dhabas or any shop so this is our duty to inform the police and to inform the government to inform the officers officials and to stop that child labor and to provide all that basic facility to that child so that it should be totally banned it should totally it must be uprooted from our india so students we will be back soon with our next chapter chapter 3 so till then take care of yourself